There are far too many victims of financial fraud and crime in this country, and very often they form together their own little groups. Well, today, something remarkable happened. They came together as one big collective group and did a march under the banner, Enough is Enough, and GB News' Adam Cherry was there to find out what happened. That's right, Nigel. Yeah, so it was, it was a big march today, actually. I, I was surprised. I think some of the people there were surprised by how many people were there. And the important thing to say about this is this is it's organised by the Transparency Task, Task Force. It's not just one or two groups over a specific in, issue like pension fraud or investment fraud. It's all of them together. Uh, because they've realised that their voice is more powerful in that way yeah. and uh, more likely to, to get noticed as it has done today. So um, it started outside the Royal Courts of Justice. I spoke to the leader of the task force, a man called uh, Andy Agathangelo, and uh, this is what he had to say when he was explaining why he was here and what he's hoping for out of uh, today's marches. Let's take a look at this. But this is so important, Adam, because today's meeting isn't about any one individual campaign organisation. What makes this wonderful gathering different is that everybody has learned that individually the campaign groups are not strong enough. We're all coming together. We all know that enough is enough, and that's why we're doing what we're doing today. We're campaigning for justice, specifically we're campaigning for people who've been harmed as a direct consequence of financial misconduct, regulatory failure, egregious misconduct by various institutions. Enough is enough, Adam. We're here to try and sort it out. So, as you see, an, an impassioned speech strong there. Stuff, yeah. Very strong. And uh, actually, I spoke to him uh, just before the camera rolled. He was talking about a chap called Ian, who was a member of uh, this, this task force, knew, uh, knew Andy a little bit. And unfortunately, he uh, took his own life in the last few months because of pressure mm. from, uh, from the authorities. And, and he'd lost all his money and there was no sympathy. And, um, and he was just a lawnmower salesman. I say just, but you know, there mm. was some, often when you see these sorts of scandals, it's high profile people, mm. footballers and so on. And actually there are some of those there today, but uh, Ian's story was, was telling because he, it, this can happen to anyone. It's the common man story. So um, March continued, we went along to the treasury and they were carrying, as I say, it's going all through central London. They were carrying the coffin uh, of what represented the uh, victims of the suicides. Yeah. So there's lots of... Uh, I see that. Yeah, exactly. As you see there, there's the footage. Um, and so those, that represents those who have been lost, and they placed it outside HMRC's uh, head office uh, this afternoon before heading to Parliament and Downing Street. There you see, there you see the, the image for those watching mm. on television. Mm. Uh, as I said, I spoke to some of the more high-profile people as well. I spoke to Craig Shaw, who is a former... Uh, he's an ex-professional footballer and Premier League football. Premier League yeah he used to play for Everton in the 90s yeah um, and he I, I asked him why he was here was he had he been affected by this it turns out he hadn't but it's a common problem uh, for footballers to get involved in this sort of thing and this is what he had to say hoping for reform you know it's it, for, I've heard stories there of people have been fighting this for 20 years groups have been fighting for 20 years people have passed away from natural causes I've mentioned the suicides of course um, and the, the momentum's building um, we're all looking people to look at the information look at the evidence um, a chap in the, in the meeting there in the press conference said that fraud accounted for 40 40 percent of reported crime in this country and I think eight percent gets solved so that's an absolute disgrace it's a national scandal and on behalf of our group and all the other groups I've been marching with today, we need that needs looking into. Presumably, you know, we, we have the FCA, we have regulatory authorities. Mm. Um, it, it seems the biggest complaint these groups have got is really against them and HMRC as well. That's right, yeah, there's a, there's a general feeling that this... One, that there's not under-resourced, but also when the likes of HMRC get in touch with... Uh, under-resourced in respect to, you know, helping those... Yeah. helping combat scams. But once all that happens and they're, you know, they're now being investigated themselves, uh, it, HMRC uh, are allegedly very bullish. You know, they send letter after letter after letter. Um, when you need help from them, it's very difficult. When you're in trouble, uh, they get in touch with you very, very easily. Yes, yeah, so I mean, you could receive a large lump sum of money, yep. uh, you haven't got to pay tax on it for six months or whatever, you put some of the money into an investment, you get defrauded, you've lost your money, but you still get a tax bill. Yeah. So I spoke to a, uh, a barrister today at the press conference who's doing work for these guys pro bono, and he said, yeah, you know, you, you have money stolen and then you're taxed for income you never received. And it, what are you supposed to do? The yeah, I mean, other countries would treat people in this position as victims. Mm. But the HMRC assumption seems to be that people are guilty and it's up to them to prove their innocence. Adam, when, I mean, it's obviously very impressive that this has been put together mm. today and, and well done. 
of a transparency task force. And I get the argument they're stronger together than being little individual yeah. groups. But where does this go from here? Well, that's the question. And so, so their plan at the moment is to get a statutory public inquiry to at least get the ball rolling, to understand a little bit like the, the sub postmasters scandal. Mm, mm, so mm. It, it's, it's incrementally little bits and pieces. We do more and more on this. I say we, you know, they and the media attention on this through public scrutiny, perhaps leads to a more substantial outcome further down the road. They're not expecting magic overnight because that would be unrealistic. Um, but it, it's, it's an incremental process that starts with things like this, I think. Interesting. Adam, thank you very much indeed.